Hello and welcome to another Shape Diver video. Today I'm joined by Christian Steckmeyer, Simon Forhammer, and Amelis Botch, and they're the team behind the configurator in planningplanning.de. We'll learn how they started this project and what led them to choose Grasshopper and Shape Diver to power this application. Let's get started. Thank you for joining today and welcome to the channel. Let's start with a quick introduction before jumping into the questions we have prepared for today. Hi everybody, my name is Christian. I'm the owner of the company Stegmeier and we started this project as a client. Hi, my name is Simon Vorhammer. I'm the founder of Vorhammer Computational Design. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Amelis Botsch. I'm part of the web development uh, for Plan and Planning, um, bringing the progressible tool online. Uh, fantastic. All right. Thank you for the introductions. So we have a, a series of questions planned for today. Um, let's start with, with Christian. So Christian, tell us a little bit about planning, planning. So what is it and who is the target market? Well, plan, plan is a configurator for tarpaulin covers of trailers. This is a quite complex uh, product in terms of production because every piece is tailor-made to fit on the different sizes of the customers' trailers and to fit the, the customers' needs regarding, for example, the closure details. So there are a lot of uh, parameters to choose from, and that's why we decided to go for a configurator. We are the producer of these uh, covers, and before we started with this project, everything has done was done by hand. The target of this project wa was to get an ready to cut file that we can automate the, the whole process. The first idea was to, um, to optimize our process in-house. But the second idea was to open this service as a service on demand for our um, competitors as well, as they face the same problems. So okay, that so was the rough idea behind. Interesting. So now even your competitors can use your tool to sell their own products. So you're basically... Exactly. You're expanding the idea of just selling it yourself to selling it yourself plus your competitors. Exactly. That was Got the it. aim. So roughly before this configurator, how long did it take you to process a single order? How was like how long did that process take? The process to um, to provide all the data for the fabrication took us, let's say, 25 minutes for every single client. Now it takes us just one minute. And then we wow. are ready for production. All right, that's that's great. And how did you come up with the idea for an online configurator? Was it because of this need of saying because twenty five minutes is not that long? Uh, I mean, but maybe you were already getting to a point where you say, okay, I'm having so many orders that I need to find a way to make it even faster. So, what what was the real trigger for you to consider an online configurator? Mm, the real trigger was the chance to open this to. Um, to our competitors and the C customers. So at the okay. moment, we are not at the stage to uh, um, to get our C customers on this uh, platform, but this is the next development step that we can enlarge our business. Okay, and at what point did you contact uh, Simon or, or how did you guys uh, uh, you know, get together for this project? Uh, tell us a little bit about the, what, what was what was your your thought process. What were your options? Uh, just a general general overview. The decision for Grasshopper and then finally for Simon uh, it was a coincidence. So to create all the cutting files in house, mainly for serial products and for big projects, we are using Rhino, Rhino already for years. Okay, but we never used Grasshopper before. And then finally, in 2018 or 19, I can remember I was on a, I attended a workshop for digitalization in craftsmanship, and then I heard of Grasshopper one more time. I'm sure I heard a lot of Grasshopper in former times, but there was no connection to my business. And then I get started to um, to inform myself a bit more about uh, Grasshopper. We tried our first models ourselves, but then we came up to this point. Where we where we need an expert, and then we met uh, Simon, and then we got started. That was the the process. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. So then you already knew about Rhino and Grasshopper. You just the complexity was such a, such a high level that you needed a true expert that that helped you, you know, finalize. Yeah. 
the file. All right. Thanks. Got it. And Simon, so what do you remember from the first interactions with, with Christian? So did you already have Shape Diver in mind? Or did you did did you know that 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 it could drive to, to or it could uh, lead to a to a shape diver configurator? What was your thought process? Um, yeah, um, we knew of the possibilities of uh, using shape diver to convert this um, let's say offline tool made with Rhino and Grasshopper into a web configurator. And I think I don't remember exactly, Christian, if we uh, talked about it uh, from the start on to later um, convert this into a web configurator, but very soon um, we did this. Um, however, we first uh, started using it or developing it as a, like, a pure offline tool using Rhino, uh, Grasshopper, and Human UI for the user interface. So we didn't want to... Um, let Christian um, 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 use the Grasshopper file itself because it was uh, like in, in so many parameters and also um, you can't do really like dependencies between um, parameter inputs. So we, we had to build a custom user face. Um, yeah. Okay, so since the very beginning, Grasshopper was a solution for this and no other software was considered as an alternative, right? So since the beginning, you knew it was, it was Grasshopper. Yeah, it's right. um, look. I'm. I've been using Grasshopper for like uh, I don't know. I don't remember. It, it was used. Uh, it, it used to be called um, Explicit History when I started using it. So I think that must have been like twelve 13 years. years. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so there really is no um, alternative to it in terms of um, flexibility. I mean, it really is like a uh, like a set of very flexible tools where you can do whatever you want, where you can draw a model or automate whatever you want. Right. Yeah. So could you could you show us a little bit about the Grasshopper file? You know, maybe show your screen so we can see the the a little bit of the details of how the file looks like. Yep. Okay. So this is the Grasshopper file. Okay. And um I think we talk about it uh, later, I guess, about how we um, how we structured the file. But uh, you can see here that we have different like sections or chunks. For mm -hmm. example, uh, everything you can see here. Oh, it actually has a big label there, three D. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the three D stuff that you can see in the configurator, and right. everything here is the two D stuff. And the 2D stuff is production files, but also what you can see on screen. So what you see on screen is not the same geometry that we use for um, the DXF output mm -hmm. and for the PDF output. Right. So you're using the uh, best practices that we suggest at ShapeDiver, no? where you simplify the geometry for the 3D viewer, right? But in order to generate the true production files, you go to a much more... Uh, you know, heavy type of meshes. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. Also, the the production files are the least heavy files because they're just the, it's just line work, right? It's like two D line work. Mm -hmm. And what you see on the screen that's basically the most uh, heavy geometry for the uh, for the two D stuff because we're creating mesh pipes to have a very sharp and, and crisp uh, line work on screen. And we first experimented with um, like squid, like um, mapping a squid image onto a uh, surface. But then when you when you zoom in, it gets like blurry. So we mm -hmm. changed it and used like uh, lines, and we we mesh piped those lines to also have the abil um, ability of using uh, line weights, because that's uh, as far as I understand, it's like a polar or as far uh, from our experience, it was a bit unreliable. And, or I understand that it's uh, an experimental feature, the line weights. So yeah, we use that workaround uh, with mesh pipes. Okay, so um, what, were, what was the main challenge or the main challenges while creating this grasshopper file? Is, does, any, does any like pop up to your mind right now? Or were there yeah. many? There are a few. 
Um, I think the number one challenge for sure is performance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's um, these, these trailer covers, they look very simple at first. They have like a very um, basic geometry, but um, in combination with all the different uh, closure types and roof geometries, materials, folds, double folds, and like the way it it um, it unfolds for cutting and the way it nests on the material uh, generates a lot of complexity. And yeah, as I said, performance is a big challenge. For example, um, for all the 3D stuff, we started um, generating that in Grasshopper. And then I don't know which one came further. Like if we experimented or if we watched your uh, video tutorials about uh, um, like improving performance, but we then switched to external meshes that mm -hmm. uh, were transformed by the through the shape of a components. And then we learned that we could even uh, improve performance by loading the um, the geometry, like the static geometry at the beginning only, and then do all the transformations via the API, API in the viewer. Okay. So, um, so we changed that several times, the approach. And yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I heard that from one of your tutorials, you were also mentioning that you should always keep the, um, the time below five seconds. The user is willing to wait like maximum five seconds. And we know there is a cap of 10 seconds, at least for mm -hmm. the, uh, I think for the, for the pro account, for the basic pro account. And yeah, we try to keep it um, close to five seconds. Um, yeah, until the until the user um, receives like a feed, feedback on the parameter change. Uh, maybe one one thing that's worth mentioning with this Grasshopper file is we're also maintaining the offline version. So this part here, that's the human UI interface. So it's mm -hmm. all disabled. It's grayed out. It's disabled. And um, so this is kind of the master file. And when we do an update, we export an offline version and an online version. And for the online version, we get rid of all the human UI stuff using MetaHopper. So we have all the, we have a MetaHopper section here and the MetaHopper section lets us select all the uh, Grasshopper components which come from the human UI um, plugin and we delete them. And then we delete MetaHopper um, itself because I think uh, it is not supported um, on ShapeDiver. And then we export the online version and vice versa with the offline version. We delete all the um, uh, shape diver stuff. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Um, any other third party plugins that you have here? Um, yes. We use a few Pufferfish components. Oh, and, yeah, exactly. And uh, openness. Nice. And how long did would you say it took you to from from the beginning when 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 Christian brought you this file to when you had the final version on Shape Diver working as you expected? How long did it pass? Like some months, no, six months. It's hard to say because um, it's also a process of figuring out what the um, what the product itself needs to be. So it's mm -hmm. not. I mean, of course, you always want to keep it as straightforward as possible and define everything in the beginning, but then... Right, uh, the product, also, product just evolves, no? It evolves, exactly. the needs of Christian evolve, yeah. And you do version one, and then you think, ah, it would be really nice to have that feature or change that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, like, all in all, I don't know, it was at least half a year, seven, eight months. Um, we didn't start, like, as a shape diver expert, so there was a following phase of... Um, yeah, getting to know Shape Diver and the possibilities while also refining the product itself. So there were like a longer work in progress phase than in other projects. Uh, right. Maybe it would be, you know. No, and I think this is a great segue to the next question, which involves now the user interface that you built, Amlis, and how it was integrated um, 
you know, like how you use web development and, and, and our API to create uh, the, the, the buttons and, and, and then the way to interact with the, with the object in the final form. Why don't you share your screen and, 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 and tell us a little bit about that online application, uh, you know, guide us a little bit of what ha what's yeah. happening in the, in, the, in, in the application. All right. Can you see my screen? Perfect. Yes. Perfect. When we started to put it online or like getting from the offline to the online version, there was always uh, already the human UI interface. So we kind of started from that point using the, the UI that was already given and that made sense because um, the, 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 the workflow or the, the process, how to define the, um, the cover for the trailer um, already was uh, well discussed with Stigmeier. Mm -hmm. So we just had this as a basis um, for the online version. But putting it online will have like, uh, or will provide us um, more uh, possibilities in terms of interaction, um, user experience, and also implementing the interdependencies between parameters. So we started with this screen um, that was very, I say, minimalistic and reduced to focus more on the process of, of, of the workflow. And yeah, as you can see, the, the center part is the, the um, trailer itself in the, in the middle. I don't know if mm -hmm. you see my mouse. Yep. And that is, uh, yeah, at the side we have like the, um, the parameters that are grouped uh, into seven categories we can also collapse them maybe yeah so um, that makes sense in terms of production or to go through the product and on the left we are having like three floating icons a few icons on the on the main view that would advance the into the experience the user experience um, uh, overall so yeah, we have like a little dashboard that kind of uh, reveals all the projects that were being made. We have a little section of um, servers so the client, the users can have direct access to Stigmeier or to, to us, to Simon, uh, to get help. And um, there are some extra buttons or icons that would have effect, um, as Simon said, on the user experience in terms of performance. Because as you have seen, the Grasshopper file was a very complex file. And uh, we started to say, OK, we have to divide it, um, the, the functions, into several chunks that could be activated and deactivated to advance the performance. So as we see right now, we're only in the 3D viewer. And we can rotate everything you know from ShapeDiver as before. And we can then change yeah, all the parameters, as we'll see. And that will instantly launch uh, the, uh, the alteration process through ShapeDiver. And yeah, referring to what Simon said, uh, the 3D and 2D part, uh, when we say, OK, we have the process of defining the product or the, um, the cover itself, uh, we go, uh, let's say, to a reviewing phase that would say, OK, we really need to see what we get, and we will pass on to the CNC machine. We will have this experience to switch to uh, yeah, the, the several parts. And yeah. That's great. That's a great animation. It's, it's, it's all living in the same scene. You're just moving the camera from one place to another, no? It's all living exactly. in the same scene, yeah. yeah. And also, maybe I can, I can add to that what Anders just said. Because we have like different kinds of users. Some, some of them want to work in 3D only and they don't need the, the 2D stuff. So you can just disable the 2D stuff. And some others only want to work in 2D because they don't need the 3D stuff. So it's like, um, for example, uh, you could use the, the 3D uh, just to visualize the, 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 the trailer cover for a client. And then you're not interested in what the what the cutting file looks like and vice versa. Maybe you know exactly what the client wants and you own, you're only interested in producing that cutting file. And we really wanted to make this um, independent from each other. So 
you can you can increase uh, performance by disabling parts or you can enable everything and you can uh, switch uh, seamlessly between the different modes got it got yeah. it so i mean, what what languages uh, the, uh, are you using for 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 creating this this configurator so this is all uh, the the configurator itself is all client sided so we use basically html and javascript um, for prototyping, we also uh, stuck to jQuery uh, because we also had in mind on the long run uh, to implement it to some um, web uh, platform, web shop platform like uh, WooCommerce that already included jQuery. But all in all, it's like started from scratch um, because there's like not a real framework um, that would help us here. We have this. Thankfully, this nice API of ShapeDiver that has that brings a lot of um, functions and uh, methods to interact with the model. So um, that was the basic thing. It kind of started on a small scale and then um, grew because, um, as we knew um, or already have mentioned, it's like a very simple product, but um, revealing a lot of yeah sophisticated interdependencies and uh, a huge amount of detail so this we could also um put here um in the in the parameter um uh, we say parameter wrapper where we all collect all the parameters that of course um is part of the grasshopper um being uh, delivered Mm -hmm. And one thing is we extended these parameters. So we have the drop downs and all this stuff we know with the range sliders and such. And we just had to, or we, we wanted to add like um, imagery or image drop downs that would kind of stick to the drop downs and can affect other parameters. So we, we put a little effort in writing like a little routine that always. Whenever the user um, changes uh, parameters, it always checks, okay, um, which other parameters may um, have a certain effect. So like if I switch from the big uh, uh, cover to the small one, of course, we don't need some cover. So, okay, let's right. hide them out or change the, um, the range of min and max values that are Oh, I didn't notice yes. that. So, so it, it it changes the range depending on on the size of the of the truck. Exactly. Of the, of the, okay. Yeah. That's, that's so, really like, cool. this is the site in here is the height more or less. So it's mm -hmm. hundred um, right. millimeters. So all of these little details. So I really like the user interface that you guys created. For example, the gear that rotates to indicate the user that a process is being generated, or there's a process going on that you have to wait a little bit. Right. The cube and like your user interface on the right. Like all these little details. So. Did you have prior experience to building this user interface? Uh, does it come this after you know several other projects you built or you learned as you went? Did you find inspiration somewhere? How did this come about? Because it's pretty well thought. Um, well, first of all, I have to say um, the team was not only Simon, uh, Christian, and me. There was also two other um, very talented uh, um persons involved and uh, one was focusing with it's uh, nick he was focusing also more on the grasshopper file uh, side and david um he was uh, also part of the development file so um david and me we, we kind of started from both ends i was taking care of the overall front and back end and david uh, tried to get the the main functions between Shape Diver and the view and the UI itself. Um, right, you were connecting the dots, no? Yeah. So you were making sure that the API was uh, behaving nicely with what you had envisioned. I think that's great. So let's let's jump a little bit to the output of the configurator. So I can't remember if you said it was a it was a DXF file or what is it exactly that, that you guys are exporting with this? The after the 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 designing production phase, the output will be like an, a small archive including a PDF. Um, of both, like the um, assembly plan and the, uh, the the plan where we have all the dimensions to 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 right. see. I don't know the, the I don't know the right term, but of course, and for the machine, the CNC machine, we have the DXF file uh, at okay. the same time. Yeah, and this gets sent directly to 
to Christian uh, to an email? How is it handled? Like, where is it exported to? Each user, because uh, part of the the UI is also that each user has his own account. So as I uh, right. mm -hmm. as I mentioned, we have this little dashboard, and you have this collection of all the projects you were creating in the past. So um, you can download it from there. Um, okay, so you you're clear, right? Is this a subscription model that you pay to get access to generate those files for yourself, so you can download them and manufacture them on your own? Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. That that's great. So I'm guessing this is a very like a business model that can be expanded beyond the Dash region. No? So you could be selling it in the US. You could be selling it everywhere, right? Are there so now like a little bit of let's, let's jump a little bit to 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 what Christian? So what what has been the response of your early users or your early clients, especially those who know the before and after? These customers are mainly small companies. And these small companies, they have one big problem. They have no time. So they need to save the time, and that's why they like to use it. Um, the second thing is, it is have a look at this uh, configurator. I mean, it looks fantastic, clean, uh, focused on the product, and the parameters, they, they are in a very logic order. So it is so simple to, to use it as a user. I mean, I'm the customer, like the others, I like, it to, I like to use it. It is so... So easy self-explaining, and that was the response. They response they like it. They like it as it is that easy and clean and nice looking. Right. They can even make screenshots to show it to customers. So because it is that good looking, right? It's really so one big part. Are you planning on adding extra features? For example, I was thinking. I think it's just in German, right? So are you planning on translating it like to English, to Italian, to Spanish, to Chinese? I don't know. Um, not yet. I think we need to make to to gain more experience, and then we can, of course, translate it. I mean, this is then uh, a small part, but at the moment, it is uh, concentrated for for the Dach, Dach region, Germany, right. Austria, okay. Switzerland, yeah, exactly. But we want to include more products. I mean, it is it is a really a big and powerful tool only for one product. This is not enough. We want to include some other products out of this field of tarpaulins, for example. Like which but we have the same the system, the same cutting machines in the end, where we can use the same uh, DXF export file, where right. the elements are grouped in several layers to um, to handle the tools in the machine, for example. So right. we want to find not nice project, uh, nice products to to fit in this right. whole manufacturing I'm, process. I'm imagining like some sort of like tent for like fairs, no, like. There are so many ideas, for example. The first nice idea, a really simple product are curtains for industry and for the B2C sector. You can think about shading elements, membranes. There are so many products that, that fit perfectly in. Right. Well, I think this has been a super interesting uh, discussion. So uh, at Shade Diver, we work with, uh, with over 15 different industries companies from all around the world, and they all have one thing in common, right? They use Grasshopper. So it's always great to see a team uh, coming together and, and then creating an online application using everything that you've learned and the tools that we provide on ShapeDiver. I think this is great. Hopefully this serves as an inspiration for anyone wanting to create an online application uh, that has complex uh, visualization, right? So it's like it's a complex product that so makes visualization in 3D and needs to output production files. Like Christian once was saying, he went from needing 25 minutes to process each and every order to just needing one minute. Like that's that's an insane uh, uh, amount of improvement. And hopefully this allows you to you know, keep expanding your, your company. And as you said, coming up with new uh, new products, it would be great to see you know the next family of products very soon. And uh, yeah, I think for today this is this is it. We've touched all the topics that I wanted to cover. All right, well, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. I hope everyone learned something today. And uh, make sure to visit planetplanet.de, uh, to visit shapediver.com, and to uh, visit uh, forhammer.net if you guys want to know more uh, from them. All right, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you. And up to the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.